Good afternoon on the Purple Couch family. This is Bahia. I am very excited to introduce you to our new uh, guest. And this woman is a phenomenal woman. She is a woman that is going to bring her energy, bring her spirit, and bring the context of her life and where she's going. The podcast, The Creative Life, seeks to look at people in different spheres, artists, mothers, consultants, lawyers, and so forth, and talk to them about their life and how creativity expresses itself in their life. We know that the On the Purple Couch family, we're not all painters, we're not all decorators, we're people of the world and there are different issues that impact us. All of that, for me, Bahia, means that creativity weaves through that. So this afternoon, I'm going to introduce you to Pastor Pushy Watson. She is a native of Liberia, West Africa. There might be a hint in there, okay, because we all know Bahia has a strong connection to Liberia. She has lived in South Africa for over 20 years. And along with living in South Africa, she has lived all over the world. And so her perspective is multifaceted. She is a master communicator. She is someone to listen to and someone who also likes to listen. And so that's an interesting thing about communication. Communication is two-way. Pastor Pushy, I want to welcome you to the On the Purple Couch family. Thank you so much. What a wonderful introduction. It's good to be with you. Very, very nice to be with you. We had a chance. We had about an hour to kind of catch up and to connect um, with each other. And you are taking a little bit of a break from uh, your work, I think. Um, how has your little uh, break been? It's been very necessary. Um, you know, God created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested. So it's okay to take a break. It's, o it's okay to rest. It's okay to give yourself a breather so that you can refresh, refuel, and rewire mm -hmm. and come back ready to be stronger than ever. So I take I take my breaks very seriously. Work hard, play hard. Um, I had a nice vacation uh, okay. for one week, Mexico, okay. Acapulco, just beach. Uh, I always joke and say I was born to do beach and preach. All right. <laughs> All right. I like that. It's so funny. The theme of refreshing, that is so important, especially as spring is now a time of rebirth, a time of refresh. I find myself through the transitions I've been through with the shop over the past year that I've had to slow things down at times rev it up, but I've had to slow it down. What makes us slow down? Is it timed breaks or is it forced breaks? Pastor Pushy. I would say you rather time it before you're forced into it. Um, you need to have confidence enough to take a break. It's it, the rat race is for the rat, not for the human. You don't have to keep going because you fear that if you take a break, somebody will take your place. If you have your lane, nobody can occupy your space. You need to be confident in this is who I am. This is what I was called to do. This is my place. And no one can sit in my seat because it will be too hot for them. I'm able to leave that seat, go take a break, swim in the ocean, come back, and my seat will still be waiting for me. It's so important to give yourself that space to refire and refresh your soul soul and when you come back you are so much more on fire and so much more inspired and so much more energy to do more productively what you were doing in the first place you have to be confident to confident confident to take a break that no one will take your space and you wouldn't have missed out on anything Ooh, I don't know no formal mm. no fear of missing out i love that I had to take a pause just to digest that in it of itself because the confidence to take a break means you have command of your space. Exactly. It means that you know what's going on. What if you don't know what's going on? What if you are going along? And in full disclosure, you guys know that in October, we transitioned the store. We transitioned to a beautiful studio at Artists and Makers. But Pushy, I had to take a break. And I was confident. Let me back up. I was confident because I knew I had to make a difficult decision. I don't have to tell you guys the details, you can just read the newspaper. There's, I, I had to take a break. Now, when we are forced to take a break, what happens? Then there's uh, shame, there's regret, there's remorse. Uh, sometimes your body will break down. 
then you force your body saying, hey, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to force you to stay in bed. I'm going to force you to calm down. Uh, when, it's, when it's forced, when you have to take a break because of circumstances, because of finances, because it's physical or financial or emotional, then it's out of your control. And use that opportunity to say, all right, I was forced into this break, but I'm going to use this as a lesson to learn and to come back stronger than ever. Because honestly, during a break, you're really not gonna miss anything if you come back stronger. Because by the time you come back, you're able to double whatever you would have done in the, pro in the time when your productivity would have actually been decreasing. I agree with that. How do you describe yourself? I hear you talk about your family being important. We're actually sitting in the living room of Pastor Bushy's sister. You have an extended family that lives around the world. You all do get together. What part does family play in your work? And we're gonna talk a little bit about her work so you guys can get a context of who she is. For me, family is everything. Absolutely everything. The older I get, the less um, important things become. We're supposed to love people and acquire things and use things. But oftentimes we end up using people and loving things. People are so much more important than all the things we strive towards or all the things we, 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 we want to achieve. For me, success is having joy, peace, love. Success is priceless. It's the things that money cannot buy. It's great when you have all the things that money can buy. And on top of that, uh, if you have peace, if you have love, if you have joy, that's the way of the world. But Honestly, what we should be striving for is to have the things that no amount of money can acquire, which is the quality of people, love, joy, things that are priceless, things that you cannot put a price tag on. The better quality of people you have in your life, the less you need. And family is everything. Yes. It's everything. You get older and you've, you've chased success, you've attained so many things, you've achieved so many things. But if you have no one to, to live your life with, it means absolutely nothing. Absolutely. Family first. Family first. That's one of the themes for On the Purple Couch, a very strong theme. You guys see little Eddie. Um, he's often on TV with me and when I do my TV segments, both my Eddies, my husband and my son, both Eddies, they wake up in the morning. And this past Saturday, I had an early segment. And I was like, don't come, don't come. And my husband was like, no, I'm coming. And I'm like, these guys are soldiers. And my dad told, uh, told me something pushy. I put it on uh, Instagram. My dad said, um, my dad, Harvard Business School, mega success. Um, latter years, life was different for him, but very successful businessman. And he said to me, but here, if you want to be successful, carry your family with you. That's amazing. Can you imagine? That's amazing. And to God, I have done that. Pushy, you have been to school all over Africa. You've had different types of training, um, education. You did your A-levels, your O-levels. You've done, gone to hospitality. You've had extensive training in international hospitality. You've also gone to Bible school. You have run the gamut, and I think that's so great as a resume for a communicator because you can almost talk to anybody. I want the audience to get a little bit of a context to, of you, uh, to you. You also starred in a very popular TV um, program in South Africa, um, akin to our MTV type of a program. And then from there, you went into ministry. Tell us about what you were doing before you went into ministry. I want to hear about that TV life. What were you doing? Yeah, but yeah I've, I've been very fortunate to live a very colorful, eventful, and really beautiful uh, life. Born in Liberia, left at the age of 10, went to an international boarding school in Kenya, uh, where people from all over the world, Africa, Europe, America, uh, for six years, and then educated in Ghana for two years, and then the Gambia for a year, and then South Africa for 20 plus years. The travels, the extensive travels, really groomed me into being an international connector. Okay. Someone that can sit with a president, yeah. which we do, yes. uh, and a pauper and be equally comfortable with both and being able to connect with either without being intimidated 
or looking down on anyone and just seeing people for who they are as people and being able to connect with them. And so that put me in a strong position to get into television. Uh, I went for my first audition in 1997 for TV, which is Channel O, which was, is like your MTV. And I knew I'd get the job because it was a, a program, a music variety program that was going all over Africa. I've already been to most of the countries in Africa by that time, had a lot of friends all over Africa and the rest of the world. And I knew it was a perfect platform to be able to connect with people I already knew and introduce me to new people and form connections with them in communication. And so I did that for a couple of years and then did some acting as well, some modeling, um, a lot of hosting of different variety shows, uh, even a health program. Uh, I have a, 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 a gift, a blessing where I'm able to memorize a lot of things at one point and then soon after forget them. So I can memorize a lot of uh, uh, writing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. material mm -hmm. for, for, for auditions, for okay. television. So I can go into an audition, memorize the entire script and nail it word for word. Okay. So that helped me a lot with landing a lot of t presenting jobs on any variety of mm -hmm. genres or topics from health programs to music programs to interviewing your uh, celebrities in America, such mm -hmm. as the P. Diddy, the Janet Jacksons. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was really good. I got to go to the Grammys and interview mm -hmm. celebrities, Boys to Men, Kenny Latimore, mm -hmm. back then in the 90s, and also meet a lot of inspiring people like Bernice uh, A. King. And then I started speaking to pastors, volunteering mm -hmm. in the church, mm -hmm. serving in the television mm -hmm. department to interview the pastors because my background was television. And that's how that transition from secular television into ministry came about. And by the time I was asked to maybe host or MC events in the church world, I had been standing on stages and working with TV for so many years that I had that part down, yes. packed. The only thing I had to learn now was the biblical side. Bushy, before we go a little bit on the other, your other life and then your new life coming, tell us a little bit about life in South Africa. My family, we had a great vacation and work session this past summer where we visited um, South Africa, Johannesburg and Polanesburg. I got to do some work there. Tell the audience a little bit about South Africa. South Africa is a very, very beautiful place. Um, uh, South Africa is uh, very eclectic. It's a very a place filled with different types of people. You've got all the way from the Dutch settlers, the Afrikaans people, all the way to the, the Zulu warriors from the uh, King Shaka you know, you've got the Indian settlers, the uh, Chinese, Asian. It's sort of like America and Africa mixed together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have the African diaspora as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Since since the fall of the uh, uh, apartheid, mm -hmm. you've had so many people from the continent coming mm -hmm. into South Africa. I think it, it there was a little bit of a an adjustment to be made with an influx of different people, mm -hmm. with them being closed off for so long because apartheid, they were separated from and cut off from the rest of the world, mm -hmm. that initially they didn't know how to receive mm -hmm. different people mm -hmm. and how to mix with different people. But now it's just a beautiful jollof rice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, where there's all types of people and all types of flavors. But South Africa is beautiful because you've got the, from the mountains in Cape Town, you know, right through to the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it's warm, warmish weather for the most part. Most of the year, the winters are very mild. So it makes life quite pleasant temperature wise. And then at the same time, it's a nice standard of living because there's quite a lot of development compared to most of the African continents. But you still have that African advantage where we have a lot of opportunities. I'm trying to put this in a way where everybody will understand and no one will be offended, mm -hmm. but we have a lot of help mm -hmm. where you can have, mm -hmm. you, you can, every average household can afford to have a helper, mm -hmm. a cleaner, mm -hmm. um, 
sure. a gardener. Sure. So you have a nice quality of life mm-hmm. because you don't have to run to work, come home, do your laundry, cook the food. There's somebody working in the house mm-hmm. taking care of those mm-hmm. things for you, which does make a difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, you would not offend anyone because the reality of life in America is that you need people to help. And many of us, we, that has to be part of our budget where we have people who, and there's, there's no shame in that. These are people who uh, are professional putting their children through college and so forth. So um, from somebody who has an ailing family member, uh, mm-hmm. we have an aging population. You can't leave your mom and go to work. Yeah. You may not want to put her in a home. And so you hire someone to care for her. Um, you have children that uh, two or three children, by the time you put them in daycare, the expense is so, it's so expensive, more cost effective to have a nanny. Uh, so this is our life in, especially in the DMV. So I can appreciate that in terms of that support um, in South Africa. Exactly. That you have the that. support. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Having support Absolutely. in the home. Having support Absolutely. so that, and also it's inviting, uh, uh, providing employment of course. for somebody else. Of course. Of course. I, my family really enjoyed South Africa. I was so excited to take uh, Eddie, who six years old, on his first safari. And uh, I was not into the safari. I was into all the views and all the rides. And he and his dad had a great time. So we loved the landscape um, of South Africa. And your, the temperature was lovely. Bushy, when you think about your life, you think about your work. What so uh, let me backtrack a little bit. You did a lot of TV. You did a lot of the music. You, you traveled for work. You had opportunity to be exposed to international um, artists and so forth. That gave you a body of knowledge, right? That gave you maybe a, your toolkit, formalized you. Because we talked about your, strong, your, your strength as a communicator. Then you made the transition into the ministry. And when you made that transition, you walked into that transition, right? You walked into that ministry with some tools that you had gained. Now, when you think about, and and many of us are thinking about transitions, and I want the base of our conversation today is about transitions. How does one make transitions? I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about your ministry, and then I want to come and talk about that bridge. What are transitions? How does one make transitions? Okay, I believe that we're all born for a purpose that the world cannot do without. I don't believe that anyone is an accident. Anyone was the product of a one-night stand or a hot, passionate love affair or a mistake. I believe that God created you on purpose, for a purpose, and that he says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knit you together on purpose for your purpose. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Beautiful are his works. In other words, he decided, I need a international communicator okay i'm going to create a person she's going to be called pushy this is what she's going to need in order to achieve what i want her to achieve and so i'm going to put in her the gift to communicate the love for travel the love for people um a passion for learning and uh, the the inept ability to uh memorize an entire 45 minute sermon without looking at her notes. I'm going to put particular skills within you to achieve what I need you to achieve. There's no, there's no God that will ask you to do something and not give you the ability in at least seed form to achieve that thing. So transitions happen when you find the reason you were born, when all your life, you're dancing around and, and, and tasting and experimenting with so many different aspects of life. And one day you, you find yourself doing something where your spirit, your soul, and your body, because we are tripart being, are all in unison. And suddenly you're, you come alive. You're filled with a different kind of energy and you realize This is absolutely the reason why I was born. This is why I'm alive. This is what I was born to do. Suddenly, every single thing makes sense. Because I was a dancer. I was in a girl group. I was a musician. I was touring uh, in a girl band. And I loved it. But something was missing. I was on TV and I was famous. But something was missing. I was on the cover of magazines. And people were asking me for autographs in the shops. But something was missing. But the minute I started, did my first preaching and I stood on a pulpit in our church for the youth and I opened up my mouth scared and nervous and unsure but knowing how to communicate um, 
I opened up my mouth and suddenly I realized this is what I was born to do. There's absolutely nothing like discovering why you're alive. Absolutely nothing like it. Uh, it. Nobody can pay you any amount of money to do anything other than what you were created to do. You will do it if they didn't pay you. You just don't say it because we need to be paid to eat. So I won't do it for free because I still have children and their school fees aren't free and their clothes aren't free and the food isn't free. But <coughs> if, 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 if I didn't have to do anything else, I would only do what I was born to do because it's a bird was born to fly, a fish was born to swim, and you were born to do what? What when you find that thing, there's nothing too hard in the transition. There's nothing that wouldn't stop you from pursuing that thing. If you get a calling for something, the finances will follow. I strongly believe that where there's vision, there's provision the provision will follow you as you chase that vision. If you're passionate towards something, as you're pulling and reaching towards that thing, that thing is pulling and reaching towards you. That thing is calling your name. It's been searching for you. It's been looking for you. It's not finding you. You're finding it. Push it. Give us three steps. I'm walking. I'm in my transition. How do I know? You've said it, but I want us to dial it back. How do I know this is my thing? I've tried a few things. I thought that was my thing. How do I know? How did you know? What were the tangible one, two, three by here? This is how I knew I was doing this. Or I went down, left, got burned, turned back around. It's, it's absolutely just a knowing. It's just a knowing. It's just a knowing in yourself that something just tells you this is it. You can't explain it to anybody, but if you don't have that knowing, it's not it. Okay. If you don't have that feeling that this is why I was born, it's not it. It might make financial sense, but I, I promise you something will be missing. It might make a uh, uh, sense like, okay, I'm good at it. For example, man, I can dance like Beyonce. Trust me when I tell you this. Are you serious? <laughs> she got nothing on me. <laughs> Okay, don't, no, 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 no Beyonce fans. No, don't come for me, exactly. don't come for me, please have mercy on the preacher. No, uh, and I still dance when I preach. Okay. I still break out and dance. I play a song in the middle of my sermon. I bust out a move and start dancing. But that's not what I was called to do. Just because you're good at something doesn't necessarily mean you're called to it. And that's where we falter because we can be good at several things. You can, I, I've seen uh, gifted businessmen yeah. that were called to be preachers. Mm -hmm. I've seen preachers that were called to be doctors. I've seen doctors that were called to be lawyers. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you were born to do <coughs> that thing. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. What you were born to do is the thing that when you do it, you will not do anything else and would actually do it for free if you could. Mm -hmm. So let me tangibly say it this way. You do something and something within you goes off and say, this is it. This is what you were born to do. Then you start making the necessary steps towards that thing. Okay. For example, uh, I'm in television. I'm successful in co according to the world. I'm famous. Um, I'm doing well. I'm very good at what I do on television. Uh, everything is great. And, and, and then I, I do my first preaching. First of all, God begins to start closing the doors. You see, the same God who opens doors also closes doors. He says, knock and the door will be open. If you have to bang, if you have to kick it down, if you have to manipulate, uh, speculate, hate, if you have to play tea party and play all kinds of games to get it, it's not your door. Okay. It's not your door. All right. If you have to backstab, it's not your door. Okay. I, I, I don't have to do anything. I never sought you by here. Mm -hmm. I never met you. Mm -hmm. You will find me. Mm -hmm. A burning man will never have to hand out a business card. If you're on fire, people will come to watch you burn. If you're good at what you do, somebody somewhere will find you. I don't care where you are in the ends of the earth. I'm born in Liberia, grew up in Ghana, Kenya, South Africa. Here I sit in the living room in America on a podcast speaking to people who have never seen me. I didn't have to chase after you. If you burn, somebody will come to get your fire. All you have to do is to get on fire for what you were born to do. 
and people will come to watch. Your light will shine so bright that somebody will be attracted to that light. Make the necessary steps. So I see, now I start preaching, my first preaching, I'm like, this is amazing. How do you go now from being on TV and being paid, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. being paid, getting paid, yeah. being on the cover of magazines, being on television shows, to now entering into ministry? First of all, God started to close some doors in TV. I am so good at what I do. I can go into audition, know that I nailed it but I won't get the job. Somebody else will get the job. I pray, I pray, I pray, I didn't get the job. What's going on? I start volunteering in the church. I volunteered for six years. Thank God I was married at the time so my husband could pay the bills. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't tell anybody quit your job and go just try it, be led by God. So my husband was paying the bills. Then I start serving, doing courses. To, to, you have to prepare for what you're praying for. You have to equip yourself for what you believe you're going to do. If you think you're going to be the CEO of a company, show me you're going to be the CEO by getting ready. Did you buy your outfit yet? Have you fixed your hair yet? Have you prepared? What is, the, what is your job interview outfit? I have a friend who wants to be an actress in Hollywood. I ask her if she has a red carpet dress. I mean, there should be a dress just sitting in your wardrobe that you've never touched, believing that the day I get an invitation to step on that carpet, I'm going to walk there until they ask, who is she? Before I ever appeared in any TV show, mm -hmm. right? Get yourself ready for what you believe you're going. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, get your mind ready. I'm divorced, mm -hmm. but I believe I'll be remarried. Listen, I got some 90s. I got some Gucci sandals. I got, <laughs> <laughs> I got some lingerie. I got some things that I would never wear until that time. And the day you see me, I told my friends, the day you see me wearing those slippers, you better know it's on. <laughs> <laughs> And then you see me wearing those Gucci slippers. You know I met that guy, right? Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Because if I'm expecting to meet a certain caliber of person, that caliber of person has standards too. He doesn't want me with my chaliwate, you know, flip-flopper. No, you cannot attract a red-bottom man with flip-flop lifestyle okay. and mentality. Okay. Okay. You can't have a Louboutin a, a lifestyle with a flip-flop attitude on the purple couch family i still i hope you're still holding on because pushy is bringing all the south african references and i am enjoying it enjoying it get ready get ready for where you're going mm -hmm. get ready your bishop bishop td jake said i think it was probably in the 80s get ready get ready get ready get ready well we're in 2018 mm -hmm. you don't have time to get ready you better be ready be ready be ready mm -hmm. right now success happens where pre preparation meets opportunity yes yeah when that opportunity comes be ready equip yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's what i did I went to Bible college. Mm -hmm. I equipped myself. I did every course that was available to me. I even learned sign language. If I say I'm a master communicator, I then need to be able to communicate with people who can't hear. So if you have to choose between me and a preacher that's better than me, and my resume says, oh, she can sign mm -hmm. to the hearing impaired, impaired, who are you going to pick? You're going to pick me. Get yourself ready. That's what transition is about. Transition is a period, a grace period that gives you the opportunity to prepare for where you're trying to go. End of story. It's your license to get yourself ready for greatness. Wherever you see yourself going, start getting ready for that place that is transition do the necessary steps do the hard work you can't sit and end me and say oh she came all the way from africa but now she stands at, up, up at mega fest with the joyce meyer and td jakes and if you're christian you know who i'm talking about and paula white they asked me as I, I was called up at the last minute at mega fest thousands thousands maybe twenty thousand i don't know how many people were in the american airlines center in dallas and suddenly Mike shoved in my hand and said, go on, Pastor Pushy, tell them. And I started preaching like I had been there all my life. And somebody said to me after, was that your first time? I said, yes. I said, have you ever stand on our stage before? I said, no. They said, so how were you able to do it? I've been getting ready for years. Pushy, I'm going to interrupt you. I want to bring people in. I want to make sure that you understand. There are a lot of references that are being made that Pastor Pushy is making that you may say that doesn't connect to where I'm coming from, but I beg you to push a little bit further. They all relate. That is what the creative life is about, is exposing us on the Purple Couch family to different types of people from different types of backgrounds that still have that same thread. 
the period of, of transition is a period of preparation. Do you want to go to cooking school, culinary school? Are you ready for a new job? Are you ready for a transition in your family life? Are you moving from home school to public school, public school to private school for your children? Are you taking your marriage family to a different level? Are you um, a crafter and you've been doing YouTube videos or you haven't been doing YouTube, you've been on Facebook and now you're ready. Should I do YouTube? Of course you should. Should you have done it yesterday? Of course you should. You know, are you um, selling your furniture in a barn somewhere and you're ready to get into a shop? Are you ready to go on Etsy? Are you ready to go into the design world? All of what she's saying in transition applies to where you are and where we all are in our different times of life. The value proposition, getting yourself ready, being prepared. What do you bring to the table? As you said, Pushy, if there are two people standing, two pastors, two chefs, two decorators, two designers, what sets you apart? You've made the preparation. You said, look, on the Prepa Couch family, I took sign language because my call is to be a master communicator. I want to speak to everybody. I don't want it to come that I can't, that you want to talk to me. I can't talk to you. So you're preparing yourself. So I ask the On the Purple Couch family, in your transition and in your preparation, what is your value proposition? What sets you apart? And that, as we are talking to a master communicator, as you can see, she can talk to, Pushy is able to talk to anybody and, and where they are. Pushy, as we bring the conversation to a close, I'm going to just ask you to share what you need to share with us. Do you, you know, you clearly are a woman of purpose, um, a woman of sight, perspective, and so forth. Um, what do you have to share with us? Okay, the advice that I'll give you is be practical. Write down the steps and what you feel you need to do to get to where you want to go to. Thank you. That helps a lot. Don't be intimidated by the task. When you write it down, you, you know, it says write down the vision and the make plan. it plain, make it clear that he who sees it can run with it. When you put something in writing, you know, you, you eat an elephant bit by bit. When you write down, and, and don't be shy about it. Don't, don't cut corners. Write down every single thing you feel that you need to do from where you are to get to where you want to go to. And then bit by bit, tackle each task, tackle each point. Go ahead and do each thing. And as you begin to do that, taking each thing off will actually give you strength and confidence to see that I was able to achieve point one, now I can achieve point two. As you take it off, it gives you a strength and a, and a sense of fulfillment that actually inspires you to keep going on. Don't delete it. Just keep taking them off as you go along. And sooner or later, you find that you've actually achieved the things that you need to get you to the next place. And it's not as complicated and as intimidating as you thought it was. That's the way you move from one job to another job, one level in life to another level. Because look, there's nothing that you're doing that hasn't been done before. And if it hasn't been done before, maybe it's because you were supposed to be the first one to do it. So go ahead, break that world record and do it. And failing is not fatal. It's just an opportunity to dust yourself off, pick yourself up, learn where you fell, and you'll never fall in that place again and keep going. You only fail when you quit. So no matter what, your goal is, no matter what your dream is, no matter what you're trying to achieve, if you don't stop, you'll get there eventually. Pastor Bushy, I want to thank you very much for the time that you have taken to share with us. Um, I love the very practical tips. I love the, the reliance also on ourselves into our senses to say, you know, if you feel something, trust those feelings and knowing where you need to be by those feelings. So I appreciate being able to tap into both of them. I have enjoyed uh, chatting with you. And the time and the period of transition is a period of preparation. And that is what I'm gonna take very strongly from this. I wanna thank the On the Purple Couch family. Um, you can find Pastor Pushy on Instagram and on Facebook, Pushy Watson, W-A-T-S-O-N, First name, P-U-S-H-I-E. I'm going to have links on, um, as you know, I'll do a write-up on the, the website so you can uh, find her and follow and see all the new things that she's going to be doing. I think she has some 
a new exciting life that maybe she'll come back and talk to us about another time. But I want to thank you guys. Please subscribe to the On the Purple Couch podcast on Apple, on iTunes, excuse me, on Stitcher and on SoundCloud and of course on YouTube. And then you can follow On the Purple Couch on Instagram, Facebook, and all the other social media outlets under that same name. Thank you, Pushy. I have really enjoyed it. Thank you. And thank you to all of you for tuning in. God bless you. Bye.